What's up guys, BSA Amplified. This is weekend update for Friday, September 1st, 2017. Wow, where did August go? Where did the summer of 2017 go? This went way too fast. Uh, what a fucking awesome summer though. But it's September 1st, that means Labor Day is around the corner this Monday. Pools are going to shut down, kids are going off to school. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, man, fall is fastly approaching, man. That's kind of fucking sad. I, I can't wait to get Palm Tree Polly back, summer of 2018. Um, lots to go over, guys. Little time to go over it. I want to jump right into it. Uh, some good news, actually. That's Ric Flair is going to start physical therapy and rehabbing. Actually, today, Flair should be starting that. Um, we were getting word that it could be Monday of next week that he starts it, but he is actually starting physical therapy and rehab um, either today or he already has in the past 48 hours. So that's fucking awesome news that it's actually ahead of schedule from what they previously thought. And if you think about, guys, where we were just a week, two weeks ago when it was not looking good, and now we're talking about a recovery program, a you have physical therapy, you have rehab, um, that's awesome news, man. That means we could see Ric Flair back in the WWE ring, not competing, but just to see Flair back in the WWE ring, uh, maybe give us a message, maybe back in a managerial role, uh, maybe just to stop by and say hello, who knows, but we could see Flair back in 2018, man, and that's going to be badass. So all the best to Flair and his family, and that is awesome news. Also good news, Alberto Del Rio, that's right, I'm always going to call him Alberto Del Rio. And Paige are back in the news mill, but for good reasons, right? They're helping out the victims of Hurricane Harvey. That's fucking awesome. Every time I see Paige and Del Rio, I'm thinking, uh-oh, this is not good. They're in the news. No, they're actually putting up or shutting up, and they're fucking giving some money over to the Harvey victims. They're trying to get other people involved. Um, they're in the news for something good, man. That's fucking awesome. Now on some sad shit, a little bit more somber news, Mark Henry, a lot of people are wondering where he's been. Guys, he has officially retired from multiple sources there saying that Mark Henry has kind of quietly retired from WWE and pro wrestling. Now we're also hearing that Mark Henry wants to stick around in a backstage role for WWE, but he has... Uh, from what I'm hearing, it's not even unofficial. Officially retired from pro wrestling and WWE in particular uh, as far as in-ring competition. So that kind of sucks, man, because I always thought Mark Henry had one big run left in him and they just never gave it to him. And it's kind of ironic, guys, because he retired so under the radar. He retired so quietly that I think back to the storyline when he was retiring in the ring and they made such a big production. It was all just storyline. Remember he turned on John Cena? I remember that and we were all hanging on every word because we felt Mark Henry did give a lot to the business and we felt that Mark Henry deserved a moment just like that to retire. And then of course he turned on John Cena. So to see him retire in such a quiet fashion, I guess it's kind of ironic, but kind of fitting as well. And by the way, when he turned on John Cena, I thought that was the perfect time, guys, to give him that last big run, a championship on his shoulder for at least six months, and really make Mark Henry the dominant figure that he was always supposed to be, but just never became. Um, but anyway, guys, Mark Henry officially retired from ingering competition. He wants to stick with WWE in a backstage role, so that's badass. Big Show, guys, uh, another rumor working its way around the rumor mill, right? Word around the campfire is that Big Show's last match will be at WrestleMania 34, New Orleans, next year. Um, if that's the case... That's going to be the last of the big Mohicans, right? The big motherfuckers from days past. That's the last of them. Mark Henry and Big Show was really it. Uh, Mar uh, Brock Lesnar aside. Brock Lesnar a little bit more part-time, obviously. But when you think uh, of those big guys from the past, you're thinking Mark Henry, Big Show. This is the last of them. And Big Show will have his last hurrah. It looks like it's going to be WrestleMania 34. The bad news, we have to put up with a Big Show match at WrestleMania 34. But hopefully, guys, you know, with it being Big Show's last match, hopefully this is going to be something that fucking they, they put some time and energy and thought into, and hopefully we get something cool storyline-wise for the Big Show. So we actually give a fuck about Big Show's match at 34. Maybe it's a career retirement match or something just that, that 
shows that Big Show was a big, sh a big, big show, a big part of WWE's family the past 15 to 20 years. And because he was, I always get down on how they booked Big Show. I thought the name was stupid, The Big Show. I thought the pushes he had was stupid. I thought everything about the fucking Big Show, they made stupid. When he was the giant in WCW, he was a believable giant. As Paul White, as the Big Show, he was absolute garbage, man. And the, the name alone just ruined that motherfucker. But then not putting him in anything special or anything that's going to be fucking intriguing to us, that made the Big Show absolutely irrelevant. A monster, a giant, was irrelevant for years, over a decade. Irrelevant. That's bullshit, guys. Two decades, if you think about it. And uh, so hopefully WrestleMania 34, if this is true and this is it for the Big Show, which it looks like it is. I mean, he barely wanted to get past 2017 um, to go into WrestleMania season is going to be big. Let's see if Big Show even lasts to that, guys. We're here in WrestleMania 34. 2017 could be it for the Big Show. Uh, I would not be surprised if, if when 2017 ends, that's, the, that's it for the Big Show. But I am here in WrestleMania 34. He wants to give it one last hurrah. I just don't... I hope they don't do something stupid like fucking Shaquille O'Neal versus The Big Show. No, man. Give us something cool. Give us something special. Give Big Show something special. Because even though you booked him like absolute complete trash for 20 years, he deserves a lot more. He was there for you every step of the way. Anything you needed him to do. He, he was there. He allowed you to give him that bullshit name. He was there in all the bullshit storylines. Let's give him something cool. One last dance, one last hurrah for the big show. And you guys know I'm not a big fan because of what they did with this motherfucker. But he deserves one big last hurrah. WrestleMania 34 seems to be the place to do it. I just hope they have something special planned for him. I'll end it there. So Mark Henry officially retired quietly too, man. He didn't make a big deal out of it. And Big Show is, uh, if not by the end of 2017, WrestleMania 34 will be it for the big show. Moving on, guys, uh, and I, I addressed this yesterday in my Amplified q and I just want to go over it real quick because I know not everybody tunes in for the Q&A. They just want the news. They want the reviews on Raw and SmackDown. I understand that. Dolph Ziggler, guys, there's rumors going around that Dolph Ziggler is only here for one feud storyline, and that's to put over Bobby Roode, and then Dolph Ziggler is retiring. October, his contract ends. I think that rumor is is there because... Last October, Ric Flair said his contract was ending, and then there was rumors that he signed a one-year deal, so that would be October to October. Here's the deal, guys. I said it in yesterday's video. I'm going to say it again. The facts that we have is that June 2015, Dolph Ziggler signed a three-year deal with WWE. That means 16, 17, 18. Summer of 2018 is when Dolph Ziggler's contract expires. So his contract does not expire in October. They could use that in a storyline if they want to, but it is not true. Forbes, Inquisitor, all these sites have already had him at a multi-year deal signed in June of 2015. And then when the contract listing for Forbes and other sites came out and they actually give details about contracts for the 2017 uh, roster, they literally had Ziggler at three years and a three-year deal. So that shows that that was accurate. Summer of 2015 to summer of 2018. That means his contract is not ending in October, but they could use that. Maybe Ziggler went to McMahon and said, listen, I'm going to give you one last story, and then I want to leave. I want out of my contract. So Ziggler could still leave in October, but that means he's getting out of his contract, or Vince McMahon is letting him out of his contract. His contract is not officially ending until summer of 2018. I hope that clears that up, guys. And I also addressed yesterday about Summer Rae. Summer Rae was cleared back at the end of May, before the end of May. I think it was May 19th. Over three months ago, Summer Rae was ready to come back to wrestling. They just have nothing for her. So that's the deal about Summer Rae. She's literally biding her time, twiddling her fucking thumbs, waiting to come back. She's just waiting for that phone call that's never coming. So that's the story on Summer Rae. Hopefully that clears that up, guys. Um... I, I want to get right into the, to, to the main story, guys, um, and that is uh, Finn Balor. Uh, th now, what we're hearing, <laughs> this is so fucking funny, because I literally just, what was it, Tuesday, I think it was, when I came out, maybe it was Tuesday or Wednesday, maybe it was the SmackDown review, where I literally had to reiterate and re-educate a lot of people on why Demon Balor is more special, a million times more special, than Club Balor, Fergal Devitt. 
right? Regular old Finn popping his fucking collar, smiling and coming down to the ring. Aside from his little song, nothing is captivating about this guy. Yes, fucking awesome wrestler, but so are all the fucking cruiserweights if they give him the time of day. So, yeah, we can ooh and we can aw when Finn Balor's in the ring with his movesets, but nothing is, is drawing people to his merchandise. If you go on WWEshop.com, you're going to see all the demon character anyway that's selling the merchandise. Nobody's got fucking Finn's face on their shirt. Nobody cares about Fergal fucking Devitt. Nobody wants to see Fergal Devitt or fucking Club Balor as their champion and fucking over Brock Lesnar, Braun Strowman, Samoa Joe, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, that all those people... And you have fucking Fergal Devitt at the top, 189 pounds? Come on! Nobody's believing that shit. There's no character to believe it, man. There's nothing special about it that would even want to see, want us to see that. So I, I went off on this whole fucking tirade. The next day, I literally heard rumors from down in Florida that Vince McMahon is no longer high on Finn Balor. This makes fucking sense because that's why they gave no fucks about his feud with Bray Wyatt. That's why they literally had Bray Wyatt go the fuck over. That's why they last second put the fucking demon character on him. They're like, fuck it. Like, we no longer have fucking time or patience for this shit. Let's just try to get as much network subscription buys as we can in the last seven days. We'll throw the demon on him now. That's why it was not announced a week earlier. It all makes fucking sense. That's why Finn Balor is fucking around in useless, nonsensical bullshit right now on Raw. And not in those fucking heavyweight storylines. And mingling around with Bray Wyatt, who they also have nothing for. It's because Vince is losing fucking interest, has lost patience, and no longer believes that that character can do the job. Now is where we pull the fucking plug on this shit, guys. Now is what... Who says the demon has to be a specialty? We, we, we all fucking have this assumption... BC, BC, the demon's a specialty. It's a special character. Why? Was Ultimate Warrior just a fucking specialty? Or was Jim Helwig running down the fucking aisle every fucking uh, week on Superstars of Wrestling? Was that Jim Helwig? Oh no, he wasn't running, right? Jim Helwig was walking down. He was popping his top. He was smiling. And on special occasions, he would don the face paint, the fucking streamers, and he'd fucking come flying down the ring with the ultimate music. Right? Special occasion. It was never Sting who we saw. No, no, no. That was Steve Borden going down to take on Hulk Hogan. Going down to take on Big Van Vader, Sid Justice, Sid Vicious, Ric Flair. No, only when he took on Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair did Steve Borden put on the face paint. Have the crow gimmick. Or the old school fucking flashy costumes with the face paint. That's when Sting came, right? He was a specialty. No! The Ultimate Warrior was all the time. Sting, the crow, and the fucking flashy Sting with the face paint booming in those colors. That was all the time. That's how they sold merchandise. That's how they became larger than life. That's how people fell in love with them. Why is everything a specialty these days? What the? Who says who? If you do it correctly, it won't wear itself out. You don't always have to have Demon Baylor on TV every Monday. You could totally leave him off one week. Another week, you just have him in a backstage promo type segment. Creepy as fuck. Really in intriguing fans. Just like they do with Bray Wyatt. Wyatt isn't always in the ring every fucking week. So you keep him totally off one week. You, you have him in a backstage promo one week. One week, you don't even have his music. If you're worried about his music getting played out, he just fucking lights out, lights on, there's fucking Baylor. Just like fucking Wyatt. Wyatt doesn't own the rights to the lights going off. If that's the case, when The Undertaker was still competing, which he was, and in fact, he's still not fucking officially retired, they wouldn't have had Wyatt do the lights off thing too until Undertaker is definitely retired. No, Wyatt's been around for years. Multiple people can have the lights go off. And then a few times a month, you absolutely do the whole shebang. The fucking entrance, the fucking crawling, the face paint. It's, it's Demon Balor. Vince is losing interest because we're all losing interest. Aside from the, oh, 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 whatever the fuck his stupid music is. When he's the club fucking gimmick, that's where it ends. Listen to the crowd reaction when the music goes off. Nobody gives a fuck. And then several times during the match, we'll ooh and we'll ah, because some of the moves will be good. But again, we do that with Neville too. We do that with Rich, Rich fucking Swan. 
Any cruiserweight could put, put on fucking insane moves like that. Nobody, he's not captivating us. Luckily, he gained that fame in New Japan Pro Wrestling. It was with the Bullet Club because that is what is keeping him away from the cruiserweight division. I understand he's got fucking some, some solid fans. That's fucking awesome. But when we're talking the, the actual, when we're, the totality, let's put it that way, the totality of the WWE fan base, not just the hardcores who are not buying this gimmick, this Club Baylor 189 pounds, nothing special is with him, and he's going to be beating Brock Lesnar, Braun Strowman, Samoa fucking Joe. I can keep going on, man. It's, it's, it's not going to fucking make me believe as a hardcore fan, but the casual fan... Is not going to look at Finn Balor, Fergal Devitt, and be like, Wow, I want to be like him. I want his merchandise. The demon is what is fucking needed here. That's why we give a fuck. You don't believe me? You go to WWEshop.com and you tell me how many items are Fergal Devitt and how many are the demon. And then you look at the merchandise sales. You tell me how many Finn Balor, Club Balor merchandise is being sold and how much Demon Balor. I've done my research. I've taken fucking polls down when they were at Brooklyn, when they're over in fucking Boston. I see what people actually fucking are intrigued by. It's the demon. It ain't the club baller. And the longer you wait, the more we're not going to give a fuck about even demon baller. Because you're going to wear that shit right the fuck out. You had him come back for months. One week before the second biggest pay-per-view of the year. And then you say, oh, demon baller's coming back. And then you did it so fucking poorly. So poorly, man. Gloves are off. Why wait? You're already killing this fucking dude's career anyway. He's a step away from the cruiserweight division. We've already seen it with fucking Enzo. They're trying to bump up that division. They're bringing some of their main roster stars over. Enzo Amore over in the cruiserweights. Vince is already not high on Finn anymore. Who's to say in a week, two weeks, maybe next month, Finn Balor isn't in the fucking cruiserweights. It could happen. Vince McMahon's getting older too. He's got no patience for this shit. If he doesn't believe in you, you're fucking out. But now it's no longer just BC. It was only me saying it, right? Oh, I always use the fucking special thing in quotes. Oh, I know, guys. You're all going to tell BC it's a specialty. They don't want to wear it out. Yeah, because the Ultimate Warrior was worn out. The fucking music banging. Him fucking running with utmost adrenaline. Face paint every fucking time he performed. Those long fucking graffiti jackets. The costume. Randy Savage always on with those elaborate costumes and fucking his whole fucking popping circumstance with his entrance that was always over the top. Sting flying from the Raptors every single fucking Monday on Nitro with the crow gimmick. Face paint all the time. Never, not only did it not wear it out, we gained, we gained fond of it. We gained and learned to love that shit. We ended up absolutely being captivated and intrigued by those characters. Because we, we grew to fucking... There was a relationship between Finn and that character. You're going to give me Demon Balor twice to four times a year? And guess what? I ain't going to give a fuck. That ain't special. That ain't fucking cool. That's what made Finn Balor cool. But now you want to give it to me two to four times a year? Fuck you! And then the rest of the year, you're going to try to sell all that merchandise. Because it's special, BC. Says who? Where did we grow up with no fucking balls that we can't make that work every week? You all fucking complain. Raw is boring this week. It's not good every week. Smackdown sucked. It's not good every week. But hold off the good characters because it's special. Yeah, was that special at SummerSlam? No, it was bullshit. It was thrown together last second. Give me that fucking demon every fucking week. And again, if you do it correctly, you ain't even got to need him. You don't need him to come to the ring every week. You don't need the pop and circumstance, the fucking song, the music. You can leave him totally off one week. Have him in a backstage promo one week. Have him just appear in the ring after the lights went off one week as a run-in. There's so many cool things you could do with that fucking gimmick. When The Undertaker was in his prime Undertaker gimmick, that wasn't just once in a blue moon. He didn't come back as Mark Calloway every week, and then once in a while we got The Undertaker. No! He was always The Undertaker. Yeah, it took five minutes to get to the fucking ring. Yeah, it took two minutes for him to take his hat off. Yeah, the whole character took a lot for him to invest into and to get into. But it never wore out, did it? It, it just grew stronger, that character over the years. The warrior just grew stronger. Sting just grew stronger. 
And now you want to tell me Demon Balor is above all them. It's so special, the Demon Balor thing. We can, we can only have it a few times a year, BC. Fuck you! Vince is no longer fond of it. Again, that's a rumor, guys. But you know on this channel, I don't give rumor unless there's substance behind it. And I had multiple people tell me that that's exactly what they were hearing. And you know what? It makes fucking sense, A. But B, deep in my fucking mind and my heart, I knew that's what was happening anyway. I saw the way he was being booked. I judge and I look and I react to how the fans in attendance are looking, viewing, and reacting to Finn Balor. And any superstar for that matter. And I, gr I, I literally draw my own conclusions in my fucking dome piece. And I see exactly what's going on. And then you add in the backstage politics. You add in what's going on backstage and what you're hearing from different people and sources. And you can draw your own fucking conclusion. This is it for Finn Balor. He is one storyline away from either going to the cruiserweights or they put that demon on him permanently and he flies to the Universal Championship. That is how much a character can change the whole career course that you're on. You could stay Club Balor and I promise you nobody's believing you on that belt when you have guys like Brock, Braun, Roman, Cena, Samoa, Seth Rollins, and he's playing around with a tag team championship. And you're telling me Fergal Devitt deserves that shit? No, you better have a dynamite, badass character if you think you're holding that championship. Oh wait, he does. It's called the Demon. But we only get to see him a few times a year because BC, it's special. They don't want to wear it out. The time has come. Start wearing that shit out. It is now or it is never for Fergal Devitt, for fucking Finn Balor, for Club Balor, for the fucking demon. Vince McMahon ain't high on him anymore because the fans are starting to see what is really up. Finn Balor is a fucking cruiserweight. Unless you make him a superstar. There's a way to do that. Are they willing to go that extra mile? Are they willing to put this demon character on him full time? Full throttle. Let's rock this fucking WWE once and for all. Time will tell. I think there's a chance. I think there's a chance. But it's fucking WWE we're talking about. They may just take Fergal. They may put him right in the cruiserweight division. And the Demon, well, to see him, you'll have to check in on 205 Live. The only problem, I don't even know when the fuck that is. This has been Weekend Update. I am B motherfucking C. And I'll see you guys next week for Monday Night Raw's review and reaction. For now, we're going to drink a lot of coffee. We're going to kick a lot of weekend ass. And I'm going to check you guys later.